Hello everyone, my name is Patricia Marenzi and this is Mental Health Mondays. This is our ongoing series in which we answer and explore topics and a variety of different areas within the mental health field. If you are interested in submitting a topic, question, or suggestion that may be featured in one of our future episodes, feel free to access the link to the survey below. You can also access that link by following us on Instagram at U of A Caps. All right, let's get started. On today's episode, we're going to be exploring the communication skill, Dear Man. And Dear Man comes from Dialectical Behavior Therapy, which was founded by Marsha Linehan. Now, this particular skill is very useful in situations where you want to ask someone something, but you want to do it in a respectful way, in a way that also maintains the relationship, regardless of whether or not you get what you're asked for. So this is very useful in a variety of situations, from roommates, to significant others, to family members, to classmates, the list goes on and on. So Dear Man is actually an acronym. And what I'm going to be doing for today is just going over what each letter is and using an example to practice. Let's jump right in. So the first letter in Dear Man is D, and that stands for describe. So describe what you want in a simple way. So let's use an example of, say you want to ask someone a ride to go somewhere. Maybe you know someone that is going to the same event as you and you want to ask them a ride to go along with them. So just describe the background information in a simple way. Hi, I'm really excited that we both got invited to the employee hangout or the group hangout or the classroom hangout. I am looking forward to it. The next letter, E, stands for express. So express what you want in this situation directly and clearly. I would love to get a ride with you to this event. Simple as that. The next letter is A, assert. So assert what you're asking for and explain it in a way that is respectful and not aggressive. So explaining the background to this. So for this example, you can say something like, unfortunately, I don't have a car and I am really excited to attend. And I was hoping that we could ride along together since you're already going to this event. So the next letter R stands for reinforce. So reinforce when you do get what you're asked for. So in the situation where you do get the ride or you do get the thing you asked, you wanna kind of reinforce the importance of it and the fact they're gonna stick to it. So in this example, if you're asking someone for a ride, you can say something along the lines of, I will promise to be there on time and allow you enough time for the both of us to get there and to go back, something like that. Just establishing the way that, hey, you know that this ride can be a little bit out of your way, the person's way that's giving you the ride. So you're gonna do everything you can to make sure that you're at the place, the designated place, in order for the person to pick you up and or drop you off. The next letter, M, stands for mindful. And so this is more of an internal process. This isn't specifically you saying something out loud, but this is something to remind you to stay in the present moment. Now, this is very useful in situations where for some people, they may be so nervous or may have some negative feelings going into it, assuming that the person is gonna say no. So they may be already thinking about, well, what if this person says no? What if they get upset? What if they think that I'm inconveniencing them? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you notice that your mind is starting to wander into what could happen in the future, negative wise, or you're thinking about things in the past, like, oh, this person's never going to respond to me because I've asked people in the past and they've gotten upset. What if this person gets upset? You see how our mind can some, sometimes just go back and forth out of the present moment. So it's very important for you to stay focused as to what's happening in real time. Now at this point, this assumption is that you're still in the middle of asking, so you don't know what the person's gonna say yet. So in that mind, you're gonna keep a neutral outlook and continue to say what you're saying. So going in line with being mindful is A, which stands for appear confident. So 
just like we were talking about being mindful and staying in the present moment, you also want to show that you're being comfortable asking this and you're confident in asking for this. If you go in kind of shaky or nervous, you can be nervous, absolutely. But if you're approaching a way where you're so nervous that you can't speak or say the words that you need to say, then it's going to be harder to get your message across. But if you're able to kind of approach in a way that's calm and confident and that you understand what you're talking about, you understand the implications of this, everything that goes into it, and you're serious about the, the ask, that's going to more likely push things into your favor. We don't know what the other person may say. That's out of your control. But the things you can do in control is to set up in a way that you're very direct and clear. You know what you're talking about and you're trying your best not to appear aggressive or entitled or to put some sort of large undue burden on someone. You have the right to ask for this. A lot of people think that I don't deserve asking people for certain types of things. You do. You have the right to ask and the person that you're asking has the right to accept or decline your request. So the fact that you have the right to ask should hopefully put you in the headspace of being confident and comfortable in doing that. It may end up working better in your favor in the end. And so that adds up to our last letter, which is N. And N stands for negotiate. So negotiating in times where it may seem that you may not get what you're asking for. Now, this is very important to do this in a way that's still respectful and aggressive and not bombarding the person with information. Sometimes people get the sense that the person's going to say no or not really or I can't. And then they'll start just kind of rattling off certain things. Either they're nervous or they're start getting upset and, you know, blaming the person or saying mean things to the person. Like, oh, I can't believe you. You won't consider this. You, you want to really stay out of that. Once again, be mindful. Stay in the present moment. Stay away from blaming or calling the person names. I mean, think about it, you know. If you were on the other end, you wouldn't say yes to someone that is saying rude things to you, right? So as tempting as it is, we really upset in our mind, it is very important for us to stay focused and to stay as calm as possible and negotiate. So one of the ways you can do this, and you can do this even before the person responds, whether or not they say yes, you can say something like, you know, I want to make this your worthwhile, or I want to show you that I really appreciate what you would be doing for me by giving me a ride and that can include maybe making it so that they don't have to go really far your way to pick you up maybe there is a destination that you can walk to that is midway or closer to the event and so it's easier for that person to pick you up there right maybe you both work in the same place or you go to the same school so you can say hey you know, I don't expect you to pick me up at my house. I'm already going to be at school. Hopefully that'll be that I can walk to you with, I can walk with you to your car. Um, I want to treat you to something afterwards. I will pay for gas, maybe if it's a longer trip or something like that, or even if it's a short trip, offering paying for gas, maybe offering to pay, you know, for a, a treat or let's go to coffee later on, or I can chip in, I can, you know, dinner's on me at this event. So you can see how you're kind of chipping in ways to make it more convenient for a person. And there's a little bit incentive and rewards. People are more likely to say yes if they're like, oh, there is something for me, right? Um, I end up getting this treat. The person's going to pay for me. The person's going to contribute to my gas. And so those things are going to make it better so that the person may say yes. And hopefully they do say yes. But it, if they don't say yes, you're still asking in a way and using the technique, dear man, so that the outcome will still be positive in a relationship. So if the person says no, there's no real damage to the relationship. The person can just say, hey, it's really inconvenient for me, or, you know, I'm not going to the place, or I won't be able to have time to pick you up. Whatever reason they say no, if they give you a reason, they just say no. It's less likely, very unlikely, that it's going to ruin the relationship. So there you have it. That is Dear Man, the acronym. And we went through all of the details and listed it. And I hope that this example was helpful and useful to you. 
let's see if you can come up with some examples in your life to brainstorm. And maybe you can practice this on your own or with another person to see how it goes. So this has been Mental Health Mondays. And if you are interested in our series, I encourage you to look back on our previous episodes and to continue to stay tuned for a new episode in our ongoing series. Until next time.